Great. So a couple of things to think about when uh, building out your email list. Um, number one, don't take shortcuts. Um, it's it's going to be counterproductive to what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, so I say here, don't scrape or harvest email addresses. Why not? Well, the simple answer is it's illegal. Um, you know, you're sending emails uh, to people that you know don't know you. You're not actually meeting the compliance of many of the regulations out there. Um, they haven't given you permission. They don't want to hear from you. So just a couple of points there and very high likelihood that if you're emailing to a scraped list, uh, your spam complaints are going to go up. Uh, not only that, more dangerous, uh, it would be the number of uh, spam traps and toxic email addresses they, that you might pick up through this practice, uh, which will ultimately you know, uh, damage your sender reputation. Uh, don't buy lists. Kind of the same reasons. Many of the list providers out there are using scraping technologies to build their email lists. So if you're gonna do it, buy it from a very trusted source. Um, but for the most part, we suggest that you don't. Um, most of these people uh, don't wanna hear from you. You, ha they don't, you don't have your, their permission to email them. So again, stay away from uh, any lists, buying lists uh, and the like. Don't force people to sign up. So this is, uh, I always find this one as an interesting to topic. Reason why we say this is you want people to trust you first. So build some kind of rapport with your customer before you force them, or I, I won't even use the word force, um, you get them to give you your email address. If you're forcing them to give you your email address, you're actually gonna increase the likelihood that they give you a bogus email address. Um, and this will increase, you know, the likelihood of many other uh, issues that come with bogus email addresses like spam complaints and uh, high spam complainers. Don't ignore regulations in your market. You know, it's not worth it. It could cost you a lot of money. Um, and then if, if you're lucky enough to inherit a list from either an acquisition or whatnot, don't automatically just trust it. Um, first thing I would do is validate that list, uh, mostly because you don't know how old that list is. Uh, you don't know if these people have opted in, if they want to hear you, hear from you, if they know you. Um, the origins are unknown, so you want to be very, very careful with any list that you might have uh, inherited. So now that I've told you what not to do, um, you know what can you do as best practices. Well, number one, ask everywhere. So ask folks for uh, their email addresses on every uh, page on your website, um, during every phone call, uh, on every paper order form, you should give a spot for an email address, social media pages. So um, just make sure to ask everywhere and then establish trust and value. Explain why you're asking them for the email uh, address, what your intentions will be with that email address. Um, don't ask for more than what you need and make sure you let them know that you're going to assure that their privacy is kept, that you're not going to sell their email address to some list provider or some third party uh, without their knowledge. Optimize your forms. You know, so um, if you think about, there's lots of room for human error when filling out a form. So think of, uh, we, we have a number of customers where, uh, say, a uh, worker at a point of sale system is collecting an email address and and you know this person really does not care about the customer's email address so we see a lot of uh, I don't care at why do you make me do this dot com no at no dot com you know just so that they could fill in the field but they really don't care about the accuracy so train your employees let them know you know why you're collecting this stuff why it's important Online forms, just try to make it easy as possible for your visitors to provide the correct email address. Um, one key thing to think about, make sure you leave enough uh, room for some really long email addresses. Uh, there are people that have long email addresses and if you limit it down to 24 characters, you might not get uh, that person's real email address. Um, for phone and point of sale, just make it easy for your employees to collect the information. Um, Teach them to uh, be comfortable with confirming the email address with the customer. Uh, and um, if you're having a customer write it down, you know, we would suggest get rid getting rid of the paper form and actually turning it into a 
uh, electronic version, if at all possible. And then we talk about pro uh, promptly sending a uh, welcome email. Well, I would suggest first before that you validate all the emails you correct, because even with all these precautions, if you're not validating at the point of entry, you should at least uh, validate before you deploy the welcome email to make sure that you're removing any bouncing or toxic email addresses from the list. Once you're sure that you have good email addresses, then um, absolutely deploy a welcome email. And set a quality standard, stick to it. Use real-time APIs if you have the ability to. There, there are plenty of, uh, there are tools out there that can help you. You know, one of the things, and I'm gonna talk about fresh address and safe to send here in a little bit, but you, know, you can turn typos into customer relationships. We have a technology that will correct a typo, anything from the at sign to the right. Um, so when someone inadvertently enters gmail.com, we will correct it for you as validating um, to gmail.com. You know, so put as many tools in place uh, through real-time APIs so that you're validating and correcting at the point of entry. And then lastly, evaluate the paid services out there. Evaluate the, pay, uh, the validation services, and then there's also products out there uh, like a Fresh Address has email change of address as well as email append, um, fully vetted email, 100% deliverable email addresses. So evaluate those services when you can.